Hello to you. Welcome back to India Global Week. Uh, wherever in the world you are watching, you are most welcome. I hope you were able to enjoy some of that conversation I had there with General David Petraeus. Uh, some of the highlights already on India Inc.'s Twitter feed. Do check it out and you also use the hashtag be the revival to join the conversation around all of the issues that we're discussing over these three days. Now, of course, the coronavirus crisis has been one of the big issues that we've talked about right across uh, the discussions and debates that we've had so far, uh, really putting the global economy in a bit of a tailspin. Uh, many countries around the world now heading for a sudden unexpected recession. So the answer to that will be reform. It will be doing things differently and technology will play a key role in that. So it's going to be about agility, uh, scalability, automation, all the watchwords that come to mind when we talk about rebuilding the global economy. Creativity, speed, risk appetite, also the ones, the firms that may survive are the ones that will embrace those terms. Um, so let me introduce for our next session, Mohit Joshi, who will be the guide through the next discussion, looking at emerging technologies and what role they will play in a global recovery. He is the president of Infosys. Mohit, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon on the panel. Uh, and I know you've got a stellar live up of guests with you, so I'll let you introduce them. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. And uh, you're right, we do have a stellar panel to discuss this uh, very important issue of technology and resilience. So let me start by introducing the Right Honorable John Whittingdale, who is the Minister of State for Media and Data, Department of Culture, Media and Sport, Lord Karan Bilamoria, Founder and Chairman of Cobra Beer, and also the President of the CBI. And finally, Srinivas Rao, the Global Vice Chair, Global Delivery Services, Ernst & Young. So thank you all so much for making it to the panel. And maybe, Minister, I could get you to start off with a small keynote to speak to us about the imperatives. Um, thank you, Mohit. Uh, namaste. I'm really pleased to be able to take part in this session during India Week. Um, the relationship between our two countries is of enormous importance and value to us. And uh, I think that is reflected in the strength of the representation uh, today and indeed in the panels across the whole of the, this uh, week. Um, as you've heard, my job is that I'm responsible as a minister in the DCMS for uh, media and data. Media is one of the many industries that has been absolutely transformed uh, by the transition to digital and data lies at the heart of that and in all of our future technology advance. Um, but of course, as was said, the biggest challenge that we are currently facing is to tackle the coronavirus. Uh, that is a huge challenge in the UK and obviously across the world too. Uh, and I'm very much aware that uh, while we are beginning to emerge from lockdown and hopefully uh, will avoid a second surge. India is still facing a rising uh, number of cases and I'd like to express my sympathy to all the people in India who have suffered from this dreadful virus. Um, as I said, digital technology and data is playing an incredibly important role, both in tackling the crisis, but also to preparing uh, to rebuild our economy and emerge from it. In terms of the health challenge, uh, we have been using uh, data, obviously, to monitor uh, the rate of infection, to uh, identify uh, where there have been outbreaks, and to um, inform our trace and testing program to try and control the spread. Um, data has been at the heart of that, and we have made sure that some of the uh, safeguards that have been in place to ensure that uh, data is protected, in this case, don't stand in the way of the necessary information we need in order to be able to tackle the virus effectively. Um, and that is happening throughout our health service and also amongst the population through our testing program. Uh, and we're also, like many other countries, still hoping to develop an app for people uh, to notify uh, if they develop symptoms and then identify people that they have come into contact with. Uh, but also, uh, digital technology and data are going to be incredibly important and have already proved to be important uh, in seeing us through the crisis. Obviously, things like communication between families and friends who aren't able to meet in person, homeworking, 
Um, huge numbers of people have now become used to working from home like this, on calls like this, um, and I am doing five, six such meetings every day. Um, people are shopping through uh, digital technology and the internet. We have uh, had to close our schools, and so our children are learning uh, through the internet and through edutech. Uh, and also, very importantly, people are keeping entertained and morale is being kept up by um, film and music and video, all of which is now being streamed. And I think one of the consequences that a lot of these developments, which were happening slowly anyway, have been accelerated by the crisis um, and are going to be permanent. So one of the things we're looking at is how we can make better use of data as we emerge from a crisis and rebuild our economy. Um, that starts off in government itself. We believe that there is still huge scope for it, us to use data in government better, uh, but we will also be developing a national data strategy uh, which will inform business and show how we can improve the take up of digital technology there. But in all these areas, I think there's an immense amount that we can learn from each other. Both of our nations are very fortunate in that we have a large pool of advanced digital and tech companies and also extremely skilled people who work for them. And I think that there has never been a more critical time for the UK and India to work together, not just in responding to the crisis, but in uh, rebuilding as we emerge from it. We already have uh, a strong and growing investment relationship between the two countries. We both remain, I think, in the top uh, five investors in each other's economies. Of course, in 2018, Prime Minister Theresa May and Prime Minister Modi announced the UK-India Tech Partnership which has brought together some of the best minds working in tech to unlock its future potential and deliver those high-skilled jobs and economic growth which we will rely on in the future. And as part of that tech partnership, we've now established the UK-India Tech Hub, which focuses on forging innovation partnerships between UK and India, stimulating local digital economies and building high-end digital skills to drive growth. And we've recently launched the Go Global Virtual Programme, which is uh, bringing together startups to tackle global issues right across the world, to support uh, those startups, to grow their businesses, to drive uh, collaboration and to go global. Um, and it's a testament, I think, to the quality of tech, uh, uh, tech for good startups uh, in India, that uh, India has had the greatest number of startups ex accepted onto that program. So when we look at the resilience of our societies, we begin to see the importance of technology as an enabler for development. And technology is going to help us to tackle some of the great social challenges which we will all face in a post-pandemic world. Things like the environment and climate change, uh, the way we travel, supporting an aging population, uh, and med tech to save lives through earlier diagnosis. In all those fields, I think there is a great deal that we can do by working together. We are particularly pleased that uh, India has joined the UK as one of the founding members of the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence, which will focus on the responsible development and use of AI grounded in human rights, inclusion, diversity, innovation and economic growth. And that represents a real step forward in favor of international collaboration and action around AI's go governance, its uh, impact, all of which is going to be increasingly important in the future as we tackle uh, those global challenges. So I'm really pleased to be able to join you today. I think uh, it's tremendously important that we continue to build on the already very close relationship between our two countries uh, and that we help to uh, build each other out of uh, this present crisis and continue to work together and to emerge even stronger. So thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister, for those uh, opening comments and for a very clear perspective on the opportunities that the India-UK partnership gives to all of us. Uh, but if I step back a little bit, right, I feel that the pandemic, especially the globally synchronized nature of the lockdown, 
really came as a surprise to us across the world. And in retrospect, it is always easy to find fault with hindsight. But in reality, if you'd asked anybody, you know, five or six months ago, that there'd be a global lockdown for four months, we wouldn't have worried about entertaining ourselves or educating ourselves. We'd have been concerned about having adequate food and water and civil safety. And the fact that we've managed to accomplish this in the UK and across the world is really a testament to the critical role technology plays in all of our lives on a daily basis, right? The fact that operational resilience for companies across the world and for governments was maintained, the fact that pretty much overnight every business has become a digital business really underscores to me the important role that digital platforms, cloud data play across the world. And if it wasn't for this, I feel that if we'd had this crisis back in the 1970s or the 80s, we truly would have been on the brink of a ruin. So I guess the silver lining is that technology has stepped in as, a, you know, I say, I guess as a white knight uh, to rescue us from uh, the crisis. So thank you for those opening remarks. And maybe I'll start with a question to Lord Billimoria. Uh, Lord Billimoria, you have a unique position uh, at uh, heading up a large commercial institution as COBRA, but also as president of the CBI. Can you give us some perspectives from your experience as to how businesses overall have responded to the uh, challenge posed by the pandemic? Thank you very much. Uh, the first priority of any business is to protect your people. And, and that's what our priority has been in our business and from the CBI's point of view is, is protecting your people in a time of a pandemic and a crisis with the health crisis the safety and welfare and the health of our people comes first always and every time. The next is, is, is shoring up cash flow. Uh, cash is a serious issue during this time. And of course, strengthening your, your supply chains. And the UK government has taken phenomenal uh, measures right from the middle of March, uh, as soon as uh, the crisis right into it, with huge measures and huge sums to try and save jobs. 45 billion pounds have been lent through loan schemes guaranteed by the government. Over 9 million people on furloughs have been supported on a job retention scheme, another two and a half self-employed people. And now we're working since the 4th of July, our restaurants, our pubs and bars have been allowed to open. We're moving from resilience to return. We're moving from to restart the economy and revive the economy and, and building it back better and ensuring that there's a jobs rich uh, return. So prevention is better than cure. Um, and we, we really, really want to make sure because many, many firms, many viable firms are facing maximum jeopardy now. And, and the key is job retention. The key is that 70% of firms right now are running low on cash. So the government is investing in the long term for a sustainable re recovery while responding to the urgent challenges that companies are experiencing now. And absolutely, technology is, is key in this. Uh, technology has been a lifeline, as the minister just says, as John has just said, that we've all adapted. Uh, it's Satya Nadella who said that what would have taken years, we as we as, as as a global, within India here in the UK, have adopted technology we're using right now uh, so quickly. So business have adopted, people have ad adapted, and we've got to supercharge this through regional growth. Uh, and the UK, for a start, we've got a quarter of Europe's top 20 cities for the largest technology investment. So we're really right up there. We're a, we're a technologically advanced country and India is as well and we love to partner with India going forward on technology. Thank you Lord Bill Moria. And so uh, Minister Whittingdale, you've spoken about the importance that technologies had to play from a data perspective, from a testing and a track and trace perspective. Uh, do you feel that technology will increasingly come to play a much larger role as the government thinks about a resilience strategy for, you know, for future crises? Yes, without without any question. I mean, I do think your point that what, what this would have been like had we not had the current technology that we do is, is a frightening thought. Um, and to some extent, awful though this crisis has been, it has speeded up adoption, adoption of that technology. And for instance, I suspect that a lot of firms who have adapted to digital working from home will actually maintain that, not perhaps yeah. completely, but a lot of uh, firms have already said to me that they don't envisage going back to five days a week in the office. 
Um, and so I think technology is going to play a very important role as we come out uh, of lockdown and as the economy gets going again. And things like online shopping, online uh, entertainment, all of these things which were already happening are now going to take place, much, the, the, the transition to that new world is going to happen much faster. The government's role is to encourage that because we do see uh, the digital economy as being uh, offering real potential to us to help us rebuild as we come out. But you know, the economic challenges that we face, once we hopefully are able to overcome the immediate health challenge, it is going to leave a huge challenge in terms of uh, rebuilding the economy because as Lord Billamoria has said, you know, it has affected uh, businesses right across the economy uh, and we're, we're having to put in place a lot of support to allow them to pick start and get going again. Well, thank you for that. I think it will especially be a challenge for the uh, small and medium businesses because larger companies have had the luxury of having a digital infrastructure, of having a technology infrastructure that they could rely on at the time of this crisis. And so this leads me to a question to Shrini. Uh, Shrini, we've been talking a lot about our response to the crisis, right? In terms of, you know, using the cloud, using digital technology. But from your perch at EY, where you service multiple hundreds of clients across the world, this is also a challenge to create a new and more resilient business models, right? Uh, what is your perspective on how we can use technology to create those business models that maybe are more adaptive uh, to future crises. Thank you, Mohit. And I already see that there is a confluence of sentiment even um, in the few minutes that we've spent together. So I'll try and dis could distinguish my narrative to two or three specific points, if I may, Mohit. Um, from a client standpoint, I think there are three particular patterns of services um, that we are seeing becoming important. One, um, you know, as was mentioned earlier, supply chain resiliency, uh, whether that comprises of process optimization or supply chain redesign, it is very much front and center of um, you know a number of our clients' minds at this time. And also to the point that was made yeah. earlier, those firms and those companies that have not yet accelerated and not yet built out their digital channels, um, I think are looking to progress rapidly in that direction. Cybersecurity uh, casts a long shadow over the digital economy, at least for the old world industries. And many of them are, are dealing with the problem almost with a true two-pronged um, consideration of the absolute survivalist necessity to drive uh, the digital economy and digital channels, and at the same time, establish adequate comfort, controls, and governance around the cybersecurity side overall. Um, I just wanted to quote, if I may, some interesting work that we're doing for the US government, just to provide some color and context to some of this narrative. Um, we're actively working with the US government on developing COVID paycheck protection channels um, and really improving the quality of distribution um, around those channels. Uh, we're also creating a portal for the US government to receive loan forgiveness applications um, in order to receive COVID-based loans by borrowers. And overall, I think we are playing a fairly significant role in crafting and sculpting the $2 trillion stimulus that uh, the US government has aimed at this constituency. Um, and that's been great learning experience for us. Um, and uh, we do hope that over time, we will be able to bring it to more and more governments across the world. Uh, I won't cover the people's standpoint because um, Lord Billamoria covered it uh, with great vigor and passion. Um, none of this would make any sense for any of us 
if we didn't put our people first. And uh, that is how we have led our way through the COVID crisis, um, whether it is in terms of giving employees an option to work from, um, initially to work from office, and then we packed them all to home, as you know. But we also accessorized them with um, augmenting internet capacity, providing UPS um, apparatus where power outages are common, I would say we focus primarily on the people side first. And once we got that right, we moved to some of our service offerings, which are technology laced overall. Well, thank you, Srini. Thank you for that uh, very comprehensive response. And I really like the uh, so the global nature of the support that Eva has extended that you examined uh, at a high level that was very useful. Uh, so let me just ask uh, Lord Belmoria, uh, Lord Belmoria, we at Infosys have been part of the CBI for many years and the CBI has obviously done a sterling job uh, in uh, driving innovation and growth and the embrace of technology uh, across the board for all of UK industry. Uh, what do you see as the role of CBI uh, in uh, you know, in the future, uh, given the fact that many businesses will need to be remade almost completely. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for your kind words and for your support of the CBI. The CBI is a great institution. Of course, our partner institution in India is the CII, the Confederation of Indian Industry. Um, and we, we represent here in the UK 190,000 uh, businesses employing 7 million people. And it's global. We have an office in Delhi, office in Beijing, office in Brussels, office in Washington. Uh, so it's not just the UK, but on the global stage. And the first call that I made after I was appointed president was to Chandrit Banerjee, the Director General of the CII in India. So that's how close our partnership is. And I think we're going to be working very, very hard to make sure that we support our businesses. We, we put up a coronavirus hub straight away. We've had daily webinars and we've opened it up even to non-members at a time like this. We've been really inclusive. And I think just looking ahead, the technology side is so important. And what we've been working with government, the partnership between government and industry has been absolutely vital in this time. And when it comes to technology, we've got to go for gigabit. We've got to match political pledges with accelerated action and digital infrastructure. And this is where partnering with India is really crucial with our 5G strategy, for example. We've got to accelerate adoption of technology, join up, scale up, simplify, support, and drive innovation adoption. And we've got to increase innovation. And this is the key. This is where I think the future is, where we're going to be investing, is how do we get India and the UK to work more and more on the R&D innovation technology? And right in front of us, in the middle of this crisis, the UK is leading the way with the vaccine research, with the Oxford University research, with the Imperial College research. And of course, my friends, uh, Adar and Saras Punawala in India of the Serum Institute, the largest vaccine manufacturers of the world, they're waiting. They're ready to produce billions, and I'm not exaggerating, billions of vaccines the moment one of them is approved. And I'm hoping there will be many successful trials around the world, but two of the UK trials are leading the way. And the University of Birmingham, where I'm proud to be chancellor, the Russell Group University, one of the top universities in the world, we're producing, we've got vaccine delivery mechanisms to help out with this. We're producing a saliva coronavirus test where you can, instead of a no pin prick, no blood test, no swabs, a saliva test that within 20 minutes tells you whether you've got COVID or not. Now, if you can imagine if that can be rolled out at homes and businesses and airports, how that will be an absolute game changer. We've got to remember, with the UK, we're very proud of our innovation. We're 1% of the world's population. We produce 16% of the world's leading research papers. And which university has won more Nobel Prizes than any other in the world? Cambridge University, not an American university. So we're very proud and we look forward to partnering with India. And the last message I want to leave is this, collaboration. What I've seen has worked in this crisis here in the UK is not when government does things top down, it's when there's collaboration. We marveled at China opening up a hospital in days. Well, we opened up a 4,000 bed critical care hospital in East London, literally within nine days with the armed forces, including Gurkha, the universities, private sector, NHS, government, all working together, collaborating. That's the way forward, collaboration, including between the UK and India. 
Thank you, Lord Billy I like that uh, you know that sort of description you gave of uh, scaling up and and collaborating. Uh, so, Minister, a quick question for you. I'm sure uh, you know businesses often give you feedback on what they expect governments to be doing. I'm sure this is a bane of your job on everybody giving you unsolicited advice. Uh, the one question I had for you was, what is the one thing you would expect businesses to do at this time of uh, you know at this time of a national and global crisis? Um, I think grasp the opportunities. I mean, we have a a role in government to enable business to take advantage of the technology which is now developing. Um, and the CBI are very active in coming and talking to us about that. I did a roundtable with the CBI about data use only uh, a few days ago. And also, actually, just to pick up on what Lord Billamoria said, um, one of my... Uh, enjoyable sessions that I had very recently, just a week ago actually, was with the Confederation of Indian Industry. So I think that the strength of our partnership is already very great. But the one thing where I think the crisis has shown is that we have some remarkable opportunities and a lot of businesses are already taking advantage of it, but it is not possible everywhere in the country and infrastructure is still a challenge. So we have a program to try to get gigabit uh, connectivity right across the whole of the UK, uh, also the 5G challenge. So government is working hand in hand with business to roll out the infrastructure, because without that, then there will be some businesses, you particularly refer to SMEs, and also some communities that are unable to access it. So digital inclusion has become one of the uh, areas where we are very much aware there is still work to do. Uh, but as long as we can put in place a pro-growth, pro-tech uh, economic framework and provide that infrastructure, and I think the opportunities are enormous. And Lord Billamari was absolutely right. The, the opportunities for collaboration between us, particularly in the area of uh, vaccine, but in, in so many other areas as, as well, is absolutely immense. So I, I really welcome this opportunity this afternoon to to strengthen those ties. Thank you. And one final question then maybe uh, Shuni, the final word for you is, uh, I know that this is a topic very close to your heart, innovation. How do we get uh, uh, large corporates to be you know, much more innovative and much more creative? This has really been a, you know, a moment of near death for many companies. How do we get people to think more aggressively about innovation? Yes, I, I do think we are at an absolute inflection point, uh, Mohit, on innovation. Um, so far, innovation, the way most of us have looked at it, is through organized programs and well-manicured and well-structured initiatives. I think the burning platform that we find ourselves in, uh, the survivalist instinct that COVID has um, deposited upon us, is going to spark um, a pace and a degree and um, an intensity around the innovation agenda like we've never seen before. So the best that we can do, uh, we as business leaders can do, is to get out of the way and really let innovation fly and conquer and succeed. Thank you so much, Srini. And with that, I'm afraid we must wrap it up. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Minister Whittingdale. Thank you, Lord Billimoria. And thank, thank you, Srini, for a fantastic discussion on how we stay resilient and invest in technology so that the next uh, sort of, hopefully it doesn't happen, but the next uh, crisis catches us even more prepared. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Mohit, thank you so much. What an interesting panel there and what a lovely way to end. Conquer and succeed in the words there of the panel about what we may do for the weeks and months to come. And as you said, maybe next time a crisis like this takes hold, we will be somewhat more prepared. Mohit, really grateful for your time. Thank you and good to see you. Uh, thank you to uh, all of you for your involvement, your participation, your attention in today's event here on this stream. Uh, please do keep the conversation going on online. You can see the hashtag there. It's at the top of the screen. Be the Revival is the one to use. There is so much great content on there. The team at India Inc. also putting out some of the highlights, the clips, the thoughts, the comments, the uh, observations of our many panelists on a whole number of different discussions and topics 
topics throughout the last two days. Remember, tomorrow there is still a full schedule of events planned. Uh, check out the website, uh, indiaglobalweek.com is where you'll find the full schedule of what's happening. Uh, my colleague Edie Lush will take you through all of that, a busy day ahead for the Saturday. Uh, but it's been great to be with you to guide you through some of the conversations we've had today. Uh, stay safe, stay well, wherever in the world you are watching. And I hope to see you all very soon. Bye-bye.